Hi Flosstube, this is Christine and welcome back to my channel. This is the beginning of my June vlog. I don't know if I'll upload it at the end of June, I never know, but I guess it just depends on how much I have to show you. I like my videos to be, I am kind of shoot for the 30 minute range. I think that seems to be a nice doable length, although I do get a bit uh, chatty at times and uh, they end up dragging on, which I know there are those of you that love long videos and those of you that love the short ones. So I don't know, just try to keep a happy medium there. Okay, see I already am getting chatty. Okay, so if this is just the start, Anyway, where am I? If you watched my May vlog, you'll know that one of the projects I was going to continue to focus on this month is the water pump by Mill Hill Buttons and Beads. And I am, I've got all the stitching done except for the white background. So I'm working on that right now, trying to get that all done so that I can start the beading. And then I got a little bit of the back stitching to do. So that's what I'm working on this afternoon. Did I say the date? I don't think I did. It's June 4th. Uh, it's Friday afternoon, June 4th. Yes, I'm, I think that's right. Yes, because my son, my oldest son graduated from high school yesterday on June 3rd. And you probably saw the pictures I put on Instagram. I'm so proud of him. He got accepted into the Colorado School of Mines, which is, he's going to just fit right in there. He's kind of got that engineering, definitely. I think he's going for computer science, but yeah. He definitely did not get that gene from me. He got it directly from his dad. I'm the more creative, right brain, can't add two numbers together type. But uh, yeah, he's gonna, I'm just really excited for him. He's gonna live on campus in the fall and I've homeschooled him since kindergarten. And it's gonna be a big adjustment for our family to not have him here. So 12 more weeks until he starts and I'm gonna savor every moment of having him home still with us and the school is only about a 15 minute drive from our house, so it's not like he's moving out of state, but okay, boy, what did I tell you? Warning, I like to chat a lot. I may delete that whole bit, otherwise this video is gonna be long. Back to stitching, okay, yes, water pump. This is what I'm working on. I'm gonna get the, all the white stitching done so that I can get the beading done, and then I'm gonna check in uh, when, yeah, maybe either before I start the beading or right after. But welcome to my channel. If you're new, I have noticed quite a few new subscribers lately, and a few of you have come over from Jemima's channel, The Rocking Stitcher. Hi, Jemima. Thank you so much for the shout-out. She's my Lenart twin. We love the Lenart kids, the Marjolaine Baston, all of those. And, um, yeah, we can kind of say maybe we're Dimensions twins, too, because we like the same dimension, Dimensions kids. But we are not twins when it comes to the Heaven and Earth designs because I won't touch those with a 10-foot pole. So... She can have all those. Okay, that's it for now, guys. I will check in as soon as I have something better to show you, and I hope you're getting some stitching done on this Friday afternoon. Of course, by the time you see this, it's probably going to be July. So wherever you are watching this at this moment, I hope you're getting some stitching done. All right, see you soon. You know, I forgot to give you guys an update at the end of May because I think in my Stitch Mania May video part one, I told you that I had bought this Oreo feeder to try to maybe attract some Orioles or tanagers to my yard and yeah it's been up for like a month and I just keep changing the jelly and changing the orange and I have not seen one yet so I don't know I think that they're just there's no takers and surprisingly enough I haven't even had a hummingbird either I heard that one early on put my put my feeder up and then I heard one the other day but I have not seen any hummingbirds now that's not too unusual because I don't typically get them till the end of summer I'll start getting them maybe end of July but uh, yeah I'm surprised I didn't get any at all even though I did hear some in in the neighborhood and then I have a viewer Michelle hi Michelle um, Shelby 67 on Instagram and she had mentioned she has a problem with ants and and um, yes, I wanted to show you that I also have a problem with ants. And so I bought a couple of these ant boats on Amazon, if you can see it right there to hang it. And then that, yeah, that keeps the ant problem. This one over here has a built-in, the hummingbird feeder has a little area you can put water at the beginning. And so it has an ant mode in already, but yeah, ant mode is a must to keep those ants from climbing all over that. Okay, there, just wanted to get that updated. Good morning, it's Sunday, June 6th, and I wanted to pop in here real quick because as I was working on this 
project, trying to work on some of that background ecru color, which is getting a little bit boring and I needed something with a little more color, so I stopped working on that and I wanted to work on my Margelin Baston Lenart kit, my Four Seasons. Let me move this out of the way. I wanted to work on this a little bit because this is uh, just as a refresher because it's been a month since, well, okay, it's been at least a month. I don't know when I'm going to upload this video, but since you saw my last video and this was one of the other projects I was going to work on this month, this is my Lenart kit. It's a Margelin Baston Special Edition Four Seasons. And I started this during Stitch Mania, just as a refresher, and I'm going to have this as one of my focus pieces this month also. But I wanted to get on here and show you where I've, where sort of my starting point is. It's not really because I did work on some of it yesterday, but I didn't get a whole lot done. So I guess it helps if I turn it the right way. Here we go. So I'm working up in the upper left corner, which is the spring corner. Let me go back here again and show you. So I was working right up in this spot here, the daffodils. Now um, I am going to come over to this area right here, and it's hard to tell from this, but the, it is full coverage. It's kind of got a light, a very light uh, pastel cream colored background. I mean, it's not completely full coverage, but I mean, it's kind of jagged around the edges. But anyway, this is a lot of full coverage right here. So I haven't decided which direction I'm going with that. I was thinking I would just take the trail over to here and work in the summer area, but and then I was thinking maybe working on down and just getting a little of this started. I'm not really sure where I'm going to go with it, but I did. So I did this and I, yesterday I think I just did a little bit of the stem and then I found my little corner where the full coverage area starts. And I counted from that spot over and I counted from this spot over and they both led me to the exact same spot. So I'm pretty confident that that is the right spot to start. I never never like to do a big stretch like that counting, but I'm confident using two references that that's the right spot. So now that I have located that, I am kind of wanting to get over into this full coverage spot right here. But I don't know. I just wanted to get in here, get in here and show you my starting point so we can see what I accomplished this month. And the third project that I'm focusing on this month is a stitch along that I'm doing with Wendy Davis. And she started hers, and this is a real old project of mine that I'm pulling out to try to get some work done too. And I'm gonna work on th that this month too. So just wanted to show you my starting point. Don't know if I'll work on some of the background area here or if I'll head right over into the flower. I haven't decided. Maybe I should get some of this background done up here because this is full coverage too. And this little design really packs a punch for being small. These little gold co collection petites are very deceiving. You think, oh, it's small. I can whip that out in no time, but they're very tedious. I don't know why but they do turn out really lovely. So I am excited to get some work done on this. Okay, so those are my starting points for the month of June. And I will keep you updated as to what I get done. Okay, off I go to do some stitching. Good morning, stitchers. It hasn't quite been a week since my last update. It's Thursday, June 10th, and I'm just sitting out in my backyard. And I wanted to show you that I'm still working on this one. I haven't been I haven't been doing too much stitching on this one because that ecru is just like I said, going on for days. Originally, I had said that I was going to um fill in this whole background area with ecru because I didn't like the way it sort of just ended but this is like, like this is the way it's charted to just have sort of an ending on it like that. Let's see if I can get a closer look, but 
I am really having a hard time getting through this. For some reason, it's just taking forever. So I may just do it as stitched, which is just this little bit left here, and then going out, extending it this way just a little bit. So we'll see. I really want to get into the beading here, and I'm a little over this at croup, so I've slowed down a bit on that one. Haven't worked on it, and I have been working on this one a bit more, though, my bird post. So let me pause it for a second. Okay, so I've done a little bit more down in this corner here. I've done finished with the light blue. There's actually two colors of blue there that I've done. And then I'm starting in with the brown. And then there's going to be or beige, and then there's going to be one more darker beige. So I could probably get that done this morning. And I've also been working a little bit up here. I hadn't had much of this done. I think I had just the, the brown stem. So I've done all of this one color. And now I've started in with a little bit of the dark green with the leaves. So, yeah, I just kind of keep swapping back and forth between that corner and that corner. And making some progress. And this is called Bird Post by Dimensions, but you know that because I've already mentioned it in this video. Okay, that's it for now. I'm going to do some stitching today, a little bit this morning. I have done nothing on my Four Seasons project, but what I'm hoping to do is maybe work on this one through the weekend, uh, try to get my other one done and get some beading done on that, and then for the rest of the month I think I'm going to focus just on my um, Lenart Four Seasons. That's the plan, but it may change. I'm really enjoying this one, so I may just continue working on this one a little bit more. We'll see. Okay, that's it for now, guys. I'll check in in a few days. Oh, and because I almost always get a question about my stand whenever I show it, um, I'll just go ahead and tell you now that this is... I don't use a stand very much at all, actually. I have I bought this at a garage sale. I think, I cannot find a name on it anywhere, but it looks uh, very similar to the Edmunds stand, Edmunds floor stand. So, it's got this thing up here, which I'm guessing is a chart holder or something, which I never use. Some hooks for your scissors. And then it's just got just kind of this adjustable clamp. And then right here, this is kind of how your Q-snap sticks in. Um, I may, I think I'm using it right, but it doesn't go in very far into there. And I find that sometimes it works better if I uh, stick the corner in. This is just some of that grippy stuff that kind of helps hold it and keeps it from pressing down on my stitching but yeah um, people usually always ask so oh, you can stick a hoop in there or you know the Q snaps however however you whatever you want but yeah I'm, I just don't use a floor stand much because it's just kind of big and I'm usually just want to grab something and have it sit on my lap but I uh, I don't know why I put this one in the stand. I just thought maybe I would try working on the stand outside and so that I could do two-handed stitching, which that's what I've been doing on this and it works really nicely. So, yeah. If you've never used a stand before, there it's pretty easy. Like I said, I think that this sometimes it's too uh, this moves up and down a little bit too too much and it doesn't feel real stable. But let me show you. Sometimes I like to put it in as a corner. Let me show you. Okay, so see how I stuck it in uh, the corner in, and then it goes in a little bit farther because you can stick it in between those screws there. And it goes in a little bit farther. And then it gives it more stability. See, I mean, I can I can push down on this, and it, it um, well, it's on a little bit wobbly concrete right now, but it stays in a little bit better when I do it that way. So, all right, uh, just thought I would show that because somebody usually always asks me something about that and it's easier to show it than write it in the comments. So, all right, that's it for now. Back to stitching. Good morning, stitchers. I was going to give you an update after the weekend and I didn't and now it's the following Wednesday. So it's the 17th of June now and I can't remember where I was the last time I showed you, but I'm pretty sure I hadn't had this done, this border done here. So I finished this bottom corner and did a little bit of the leaf section over here. 
I did finish these leaves, added those leaves there, and I ended up doing, um, starting in on a second color up here in this border and finishing the leaves up there. So I made a little bit of progress and then I had to pull myself away from this one to work on my uh, water pump and sadly I'm still not done with that ecru. I'm still chipping away at it and it's just been a struggle. I just haven't felt like working on this because it's just, I mean sometimes I'm in the mindset to just do, you know, boring stitching like that but yeah, it just uh, seems like it's just taking forever to get through that. I only have a little bit left to do. So I just got this section here and then uh, kind of going down a little bit down in this area here and then just finishing up a little bit right there. So I'm getting close, getting close to being able to do the beading on this, which I'm excited about. But um, And I haven't done anything on my four seasons. So that's pretty much all the stitching I've done since we last talked. Um, I've just, my stitching time has greatly been reduced. Summer is in full swing and we are just getting so busy just with stuff, summer stuff. So I haven't been doing a lot of stitching. I'm still hoping to get the beading on this finished this month and to get this one completed. And I would love to get this top border area completed this month. Not really sure how if I'm ever going to get uh, a chance to work on my four seasons but I'm gonna try but these two I think are my priority I'm really enjoying this one again and oh I, I would like to do a little bit of back stitching over here too on the bird because I don't like to save that all for the ending but yeah like I said it's just been um, busy I did buy three new charts I have two of them to show you here and the third one is going to arrive on Friday so yeah, I've been doing a little bit of shopping. Not like I need another chart, right? We all say that, but I just couldn't help it. Um, several people reached out to me. I had mentioned, I think probably more than once in a past video, that one of my unicorn charts, that, you know, hard to find charts that I would love to have uh, get, get my hands on, was, um, why can't I remember the name of it? The Finery of Nature. And several people reached out to me actually last year, the end of last year, I think it was, and told me that Dimensions had re-released it and that it was going to be available this spring. So I was very excited about it and I just got my hands on a copy. So this is a brand new re-release. So if you are like me and have been wanting this one, it is now available. I actually bought this one on Amazon. So uh, yes, I'm excited to get started on that. Don't know when I will. I have... Lots of other things I'm working on right now and I'm just not sure. Maybe this will be like a new year, new start. But that being said, I also got my hands on a pattern that I saw. Somebody on Instagram was stitching it and I saw it and I fell in love with it and I went on the search and it was, um, I think it was, I don't know if it was a Russian, I, I, I know I couldn't, I couldn't even when I translated it, um, she hadn't put the name of it, but then I contacted her and she told me what the name of it was, I think. Either that or I found it out. I can't remember, but I got this pattern right here. It is a Lenart, but it's not a Margelin Baston. It's not based on Margelin Baston's artwork, I don't think, but it sure has that same feel to it. But, oh my gosh, this is so gorgeous. And this picture doesn't do it justice, because when I actually saw the person that stitched it on Instagram, I just fell in love with it. So I think this is going to have to be one of my starts here for the fall. I should finish the one I'm doing with the pumpkins, so maybe that's what I'll do. I'll finish pumpkins and then get started on this, but isn't that pretty? Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So what is the name of it? Um, good question. Let me turn it over and see if we can see what it's called. Oh, there it is. Home and Garden. So, oh no. Home and Garden Cross Stitch Collection, and the name of this one is Wheelbarrow and Sunflowers by Caroline Backer or Bacher. Oh, those colors are so pretty. Sorry about the glare. I am so excited to start this one. <sighs> but yeah, like I was saying, you know, our, my stitching time has just been so limited lately. 
um, with all our summer activities and it's just so different from last year when we were all stuck in quarantine not going anywhere or doing anything and so I'm excited this weekend Saturday I'm gonna go on my first ever hike in like 20 years now I live in Colorado and I'm just right by the foothills I mean I have all of the Rocky Mountains right in literally in my backyard practically and I used to do a lot of hiking and a lot of backpacking but then when I had kids um, I, I just haven't done any of it my husband had read a book when the kids were little, um, somebody had recommended a book for him, and I think it was called Beast in the Garden. And it really made an impact on him because it's about sort of how stealthy mountain lions can be and how they can, like, pretty much take a pet or a small child, like, right out from underneath you when you're, you know, and hiking and, you know, just how stealthy they can be. And he's like, you are not taking these boys backpacking. <laughs> so or hiking even, you know, because it just really made an impact on him and how their fear of humans has sort of decreased as we encroach on their habitat. So I never, I never took the kids hiking. My sister-in-law has been asking me to go hiking for a couple of years and I keep making excuses because I now I think, gosh, do I really even have the, you know, physical capability to do all that hiking? But she insisted she can find some easy hikes for me. So we're all going to go on a hike. Beautiful hike. It's it's like just a, an out and back hike, 3.2 3 miles, and apparently it has beautiful wildflowers and gorgeous sceneries and only a small little creek crossings, so it shouldn't be anything too strenuous. She insisted I'd be able to do it just fine. Anyway, that was a long rant about the fact that I'm really excited to go hiking on Saturday, and maybe you'll see some pictures on Instagram. You will have already seen them by the time you see this video, but yeah, I'm excited, so wish me luck. Um, all right, I'll check in when I've hopefully got to have started the beating. That's, that's my goal next time I check in, and, and I'll show you what my new other new kit is that I bought. Okay, guys, I'll see you. I hope you have a great stitching day. Talk to you soon. And just like that, it's the end of June. Today is June 28th. Uh, it's a Tuesday, and I'm sitting in my husband's truck right now because he's inside this building, this medical building, getting an MRI done for a shoulder injury. And I feel bad for him because he does not like having MRIs done. He has to have them done once a year for his multiple sclerosis, and he just does not like them. So I told him I would come along and, uh, you know, keep him company on the drive and wait in the truck. So here I am with my stitching, and I thought that I would go ahead and do my last, the last clip for this month's update while I'm sitting here, because I doubt I'll get much more done. Let's see, what did I say? Oh, no, it's the 29th. It's not the 28th. It's Tuesday the 29th. So yes, tomorrow's the last day. And if I pause every once in a while, it's because I'm sitting right by the entrance, and I have the windows down on my car, and I don't know, you know, it's just weird. So I decided I would do my last clip and show you what I've been working on. So the first thing I want to show is this right here. Dun, dun, dun. I got this done. Yay. I've got my water pump all done and I put it in my little Michael's shadow box frame. And if you notice, you might, you might have remembered in that last clip. <laughs> I, okay, the last clip seems a long time ago to me, but yes, I keep remembering, have to keep remembering that you just saw that last clip, and I had mentioned that I wasn't going to do fill in all of that back stitching, all of the background with the ecru stitching, and as you can see, I decided to go ahead and do that. You know what? I'm going to take it out of this frame because you can't really see the bead. So let me let me put you on pause and take this out of the frame and show you what it looks like in all its glory. Okay, so I have a white piece of paper behind it. I have that in there in the frame so that uh, I'll just keep it there because you can see better. So let me zoom in. And let's just take a look here at, so let's turn it that way so you could really see the beads. And what I noticed, what, what ended up making me want to go ahead and finish doing all of the ecru in the, ooh, what is this right here? Did I miss a stitch next to his? Let me look. Oh, I think I forgot to cross. It's so weird. I can see this whenever I film. Yeah, that stitch right by his nose there. Looks like I forgot to, to uh, do the cross going the other way. Um, hold on. People walking by. Just a minute. Okay, there must have uh, just been a shift change because a whole bunch of him 
medical employees just came walking out of the building. Okay, let's go back to where, so yes, I see that I missed the little stitch. Let me keep this piece of paper behind it here. And let's go ahead and zoom in again so you can see the stitch that I missed going the opposite way. But there's the little birds. They've just got a little bit of beads on their wings there. Some beads. The water pump there. Some of them kind of lay kind of wonky. That's okay. That's just how Mill Hills are. All right. I almost forgot to tell you guys, I have a, uh, a little friend here with me today, a little co-pilot. Uh, if you look over to the right over there, she's kind of shy, but you can see her kind of peeking through. See? Meet June. June the giraffe. She's this little finger puppet that I found at a garage sale, <laughs> and I had to buy her. <laughs> she's the cutest thing ever. Hand stitched. So I was at a garage sale at this place right near my house, and this lady, uh, she used to own a store, a shop that was had full of handmade gifts. And as a matter of fact, if you look down there, I, I wanted to buy that purse, and I didn't have any money, or, or I didn't have any money left, and I had my young son with me, and I asked him if I could borrow $5 because he still had some cash left, and they just thought that was the sweetest thing ever that he let his mom borrow five dollars so that she could buy that purse and then so anyway they said well you know for your generosity you could pick a finger puppet out of this big bin of they had all these hand knitted finger puppets of all these different animals and they let Riley pick one out and he picked out an octopus and I looked in there and I saw this little giraffe peeking through and I said I have to buy that so I paid a dollar for this little thing so cute handmade I don't know how anybody could knit something that tiny. I mean, it's just so cute. That face is so expressive. So, you know, I couldn't name her April the Giraffe because there's only one April, but I did buy her in June, and um, so I'm calling her June the Giraffe. And she's going to be uh, helping me today as I point to things. So, back to where we were. Let's get back to the stitching. I don't really know what more I was going to say about this other than the fact that it was fun and it turned out really cool and I oh yes so th where these little um, st flowers are down here these blue flowers when when the and especially on this side over here when I hadn't done the white background on that they just sort of blended into the background and then so I thought well I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in all the stitches down here with the ecru color and then when I did that and I was all completely done with it and it didn't seem as daunting because at first it seemed daunting because I had to do all of that stitching before I got to the beads but once I did the beads I thought well I'm pretty much done with everything now so I may as well just finish filling in all here so that's what I ended up doing and that's how the decision was made to fill in all the background with the ecru and I had to use obviously quite a bit of my own ecru because there wasn't that there wasn't as much there wasn't enough in the kit to do that, all that back stitching. So I'm done. And I'm probably going to have to hurry this up a little bit because I keep getting this warning on my phone that my that it's getting hot and that the video quality isn't going to be good. So what do you say, June? You want to go ahead and move on to the next project? Yeah, you agree? Okay, let's do it. Okay. Um, so the only other one I worked on, and I haven't done much, is this one right here. Let me move this off to the side. Okay, if you remember, I was working on the Gold Collection Petite called Bird Post, and I had wanted to work a little bit in the background up here and the background up there. So let's look and see what I've gotten done on that. All right, so I didn't get quite as far as I wanted to. I did get all of this done down here, so that was good. And I did, I think, I think I might have had that green done already too. Um, but then, yes, I can't remember what I had done in the last clip. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've done much since the last clip. I think I've only added a few colors up in this area up here. And um, yeah, 
I'm going to try right now, as soon as I'm done finishing this, uh, filming this video, I'm going to work on this area right here and try to get this done because I'd like to get that done uh, before the end of the month tomorrow. So I think that's what I'm going to work on right now. And uh, I was going to say something else. I think I was going to talk about my plans. I don't know what I'm going to do because you know how in that last clip I said I was going to be going on a hike? Well, I did go on a hike, and I've been on two more hikes after that. And now I've just found my passion for hiking again. So what are my plans for July and August? I see myself only getting busier as the summer goes on. There's just all kinds of things we want to do, and so I'm not going to make any plans, but I've really been feeling the call to stitch some Halloween stuff. I mean, everybody's getting into Jolly July, getting ready for Jolly July, and I just have never felt like doing the Jolly July thing. I I don't know why, so I was kind of thinking since I want to do Halloween stuff so bad that I might do like jack-o'-lantern July or something, so I may stitch some jack-o'-lanterns or something Halloween related because I've just really been feeling the need to do that. I'm not going to set any goals with what I'm going to do stitching and I don't even know how much filming I'm going to get done. So I may try to do a vlog as I get some stitching done if I do anything, but if I don't, then I'm probably not going to worry about doing an update till maybe late summer. So you might not see me till then, but I'll try. I'll try if I uh, do any stitching to get out the phone and record a little bit and let you know what I'm doing. So, all right, before my phone dies or overheats or self-combusts or something, um, I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you soon. I thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of the likes and subscribes and comments. It really means a lot to me, guys. And um, for now, June and I, we, we say goodbye. So, all right, have a great summer. Bye. As per usual, I need to add another clip onto the end of this because as I was editing it, I realized that I needed to tie up a few loose ends. One of them being that uh, it was probably obvious, but I did not work on the uh, Lenart Four Seasons. Uh, I didn't work on that kit anymore this month, so you probably gathered that already. But I did want to say that I didn't forget to show you it, I just didn't work on it. Also, I had mentioned that I had ordered a new kit and that it was going to be arriving that following Friday, and then I sort of left you hanging on that and never showed it to you, and it's because it's back-ordered. So I haven't received it yet, but I wanted to show you that this is the one it is. So it's another Lenart kit based on Marjolaine Baston's artwork, of course, and it's called Butterflies and Echinacea, I think is the name of it. So, or Butterfly Bush butterfly yes I think it's butterfly and echinacea I can't remember but I'll show it in my next video because I'm sure I'll have it by then but that's what it looks like and it's kind of dark let me let me see if I can turn on my light and see if that makes it better all right maybe that looks a little better anyway it's very beautiful so while we're at it also when I was in the car doing that last clip um, waiting for my husband's MRI I didn't get any stitching done because pretty much right after I was done filming that clip he texted me and said he was already done. He was just waiting for some paperwork. So that was just like really quick and I didn't get any stitching done. And, uh, but I did get some done the following. So I think that was on the 29th. Then the 30th, I did a little bit of stitching, but then I finished up some, oh, I should probably say that it's July 2nd. So I am going to, instead of adding this into the July vlog, I decided to go ahead and tack it on to the end of the June vlog because I'm probably going to put this one away for now, but I did want to show you that I accomplished my goal of getting that corner done. Filled that all in. Let me grab my pointer here. So yeah, I wanted to finish all of this and I got that done. I didn't do the back stitching on the bird like I wanted to do this month, but I think I'm going to put this one away and work on something else in July. I just haven't decided what yet, but I wanted to show you. And also the garage sale that I was telling you about where I bought my purse and that little cute little uh, giraffe finger puppet, June. Um, I found this little, it was a pin, it had like a pin backing on it. And I found that in somebody who just had a bunch of jewelry and I was looking through it. So of course I had to turn that 
quickly into a needle minder. Very cute. And one more thing I want to mention is I want to give a shout out. Let's scroll over here to my Kindle. Willow Creek Stitches. Uh, she's, I don't know if she's a new, how new of a floss tuber she is. I think she had another channel and I, I, I can't remember if she had a channel and then she started a new channel, but she only has a few videos out, maybe five, four or five videos. And she gave me the sweetest, most heartfelt shout out in her most recent video. And so I, I mean, I had to check her out and I love her stitches. I love the projects that she's working on. So I wanted to just to, to let you know about her and that maybe hopefully you'll go over and give her um, a watch and potentially subscribe if you like what you see there. But she's working on a pattern called Halloween Surprise and I've been watching her on on Instagram stitching it and so cute I didn't know she had a floss tube video so I'm so happy that she has a floss tube video and I went and I'm now today getting caught up on some of her older videos a couple of her older videos I just love when um, I find somebody that stitches projects that I haven't seen before and she just has some projects that I haven't seen before so it's kind of nice and refreshing to see just I don't know unique unique patterns and kits out there that, I mean, obviously the ones that are popular are, you know, wonderful to see. And it's just nice when you see stitches that other people aren't stitching. I try to always thank everybody that gives me a shout out because I really appreciate it. And if you have given me a shout out and I haven't thanked you for it, it's probably because I don't know about it. And I think that's it. I think that's all I have to say. So this video probably is going to come to an end. I knew it. I knew that I would forget to tell you this. I did go back and fix those three stitches in my water pump that if you had a very sharp eye, you would notice that I didn't just miss one stitch, but I missed like three stitches crossing them the other way. And I did go back and I looked at all of my stitches and I I completed the three that were only half done. So you can rest easy now knowing that I did fix those stitches. <laughs>